Get this. Weekdays on the Triple M Network and KOFM in Newcastle. Cal Wilson is with us. Have you ever really? seen EastEnders, yes. Cal? It's on Foxtel UK TV. Oh, yes. They keep it used moving. to be on the ABC. I think it did. Mm. Maybe it was too good. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, no. Oh, don't get me started. They were forced to show it in order. <laughs> <sighs> There's a bloke called Frank Butcher on it. Yeah. Oh, have you seen Frank Butcher's yes. work? Yes. I just want to say the words not subtle. But ah. that doesn't sum up how loud the bloke can bellow. Really? Even the smallest piece of information can be bellowed <laughs> with a bit of Cockney <laughs> slang thrown in as well. All right. He's a tough governor Is kind he? of a What's character. What's his job? Oh, sort of lovable rogue. Uh, yeah, he, he's yeah. not the, the landlord of the Queen Vic. Gets something. around in a tracksuit a bit? Yeah, maybe, with a bit of a bit of sort of pommy bling. Yeah, like a thin, one thin gold chain. And everything is bellowed at top volume. Okay. That's the thing. And he's been out of the series for a while. Where is he? Where did he go? He had to hide out in Spain for a while till <laughs> the Rosas left him alone. <laughs> okay. He was just outside the studio shouting and we yeah. could still hear him, so it was all right. Still here. Now, we're going to play a clip of Frank Butcher Good. on EastEnders. You might want to turn the volume down on your radio a little do, bit. Do we need to know what's been happening? Oh, uh, I think you'll get the idea. Okay. Okay. Just listen to this for subtle acting. You took me to bed, and all the time you were lying. <laughs> well, fair exchange is no robbery, and maybe I'm the one who's feeling dirty and used, eh? And that, that there was nothing to do with Janine, because that was me and you. You pretended you knew nothing. I felt sorry for you. I couldn't tell you I know all about it. I can't come charging up to your shout in the oats. Well, it would have been more honest. Honest? Pot kettle? She's working, you. Working me nothing. <laughs> She's terrified. She's been through hell. You put her there. She may never even recover. What is the matter with you, woman? She's just an ordinary girl who's done nothing she wrong. She killed Barry. Now let go of me. Janine's barrister is hardcore. He's going to have you for breakfast. You can't take him on. Don't talk to me like I'm some old woman. You are an old woman for crying out loud. Doing a stretch at your time in life. <sighs> Let's go and find somewhere quiet. Frank. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we're quiet when Frank's not yelling. <laughs> that conversation was over three locations. You'll notice they were the only people in those locations. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go somewhere quiet. <laughs> Well, I guess we do a lot of shouting on this show, so I can't, can't really point the finger. It'd be a case of... Pot kettle! What does that mean? <laughs> pot calling the kettle black. Oh, is it shortened to it's pot kettle? It's shorthand. He's got it just down to... Pot kettle! Pot kettle! <laughs> it sounds like Tourette's, doesn't it? It's like it's <laughs> random now. Pot kettle. So then Pat and Frank have gone somewhere quiet to continue the conversation Good. in a quiet manner. Darling... Your child is a stranger to you. God help us. <laughs> oh, some cock eye revenge about nothing. No, very adequate and all. Barry uh, went off into the Scottish mountains wearing a pair of city shoes, like the dozy big plum he always was. Janine wasn't there. Uh, and because she said something to you, you've taken it as gospel when you should have known damn better. You have no right to tell me what to do. I have every right. <laughs> this is my daughter we're talking about, and it's you. And I love you, you balmy old horse. <laughs> my ears are bleeding. <laughs> that is walking into the Scottish mountains in city, city shoes. shoes. Like the dopey plum he always was. The dozy plum, I'll have you go. No. dozy plum. And what is it? He loves you, you old what? Barmy old horse? You barmy old horse! Barmy old horse. Oh, Frank, you say the nicest things. And that is a quiet conversation with Frank Butcher. <laughs> she started whispering at the very her first line was, whisper, you know, Frank, we should something, something. What yeah, are you what? talking about? Frank, we're in a library, man. <laughs> Jesus. The books are telling us to be quiet. That, he's amazing. What, so what's going I can't even tell what's going on. Oh, it's too complicated. It was like, I knew it was English, but it wasn't making any sense. <laughs> the thing I'm waiting for is that Borat movie. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Oh, the bloke who runs oh. this network. Ah, oh, the genius that runs this network. He took me aside this morning in the underground car park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to get that Borat on. <laughs> <laughs> friend of mine went to the Cinema Owners oh, yeah. Convention. Ah, uh, good idea. Crusty, cynical scene at all. They cinema hate it owners. all. They even hated the breakup with Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> That's how cynical they are. Even they were blasted out Looking of their torpor.
when I worked at the video shop, when Jurassic Park was coming out on video, and yes. it was going to be the biggest event that ever happened to anyone ever in their whole lives. Right. And they invited us to this this like event. So we all went along, and it was like all Jurassic Park themed. And it was an hour and a half of, of like sizzle merchants telling us how it was going to cut through. And, and were the people you know, dressed as dinosaurs running around no, in the foyer? Unfortunately, no. That I would have liked. <laughs> you know, and there was like bar graphs about how it was going to like max up our earnings and all this kind of stuff. And I, we were bored senseless because the promise was at the end of it, we'd get a copy of Jurassic Park and they gave us the book. Oh, the novelization. The novelization. The and oh, I, no, it was no, 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 it was the novel first. It was a Crichton, book, it. It was Crichton book first. <laughs> and and then make a great you movie. You read it. Yeah. I've never been more proud of my manager. He grabbed the book and he said, so we're getting a book, are we? And they said, yeah, you get a book. And he threw it on the floor and walked off. <laughs> For a second there, I thought you had a manager when you were like just yeah. working in a video shop. Yeah, no, no, I had people. <laughs> I had my my, my people were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we had some offers coming in, Ed. Uh, how would you like to stand behind the counter at uh, Blockbuster <laughs> no, for a couple of hours next Friday night? How yeah. many taquitos are in it for me? <laughs> yeah, so it's only a gig. You'll only be seen from the waist yeah. up. So. Yeah, okay. We'll get okay. back to their people. Dave Graney is with us today. He has a fantastic new album called Keeping It Unreal. Mm. You're making fun of Nick Kershaw. Oh, we are not. As, uh, doesn't it give you some uh, sense of the ephemeral nature of the way the entertainment yeah, industry true. chews up people? That's true. Yeah. When you watched the Arias last night, didn't yeah. you feel some sort of sadness for the people in the spotlight there? Oh, uh, yeah. Not sadness, because they were getting like sweet awards and, oh. and sold lots of records. Right. Yeah, but will that last though? Uh-huh. You know, so, I, I've been that's looking, what I was asking. I was looking yes. back through the blast from the past on mm. the ARIA's website mm. to look at all the old photographs to answer exactly that mm. question. Yeah. Seeing people like called Melissa something or another, I don't really Decaps, remember. Yeah. Okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a Wiggles there. They're still going. Mm. They're doing well. Here's a disturbing photograph. Bob Geldof and Craig McLaughlin oh. on stage together oh, in 1990. Wow. Excellent. And there's Craig, permed, of course, yeah. denim, yeah. Uh, sort of lording it up to someone. And Bob Geldof looks like he's having the worst time. Ooh. He's been placed next to Don't tell him it's going to do Mona. <laughs> he's saying. That's what he's saying. So you're not watching the Arias. I didn't have the TV on last night. I was reading a book by Arthur Rambeau. Oh, right. Mm. It was so yeah. exciting. I, I forgot to turn the TV on. Wow. It was a French poet. Yeah. Mm. I wasn't thinking it was Rambo, if that's what you're wondering. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Arthur Rambo, first blood part one. Yeah, I wasn't thinking right, that. Yeah. I was a bit. But when the TV is on at oh, the Ponderosa, yes, what right. might be uh, seen on the screen, Dave? Oh, well, I'm really into that TV show you lent me, The Wire. The oh, one The you Wire. Stole off that so mafia good. Guy. There's one, uh, which is, I think, called A Place in Italy, and it mm. shows that even the most idyllic location can be enhanced by fat builders with uh, cleavage <laughs> around the back. <laughs> <laughs> and have a listen to this clip from next week. In the next program, Rima returns to Italy to secure the hospital and spots some worrying cracks. Yeah, that's those builders yeah, again. Yeah, they are. Man, I cracks have, in Tuscany. I have been enjoying that, uh, that show that you were on in the... Uh, what will we do next? That one is it? Oh, Thank God you're here. <laughs> when you were we on in the super, <laughs> Superman outfit, that yeah. was excellent. Form fitting, sadly. Mm. Yes, that's yeah. great. And it's just when you're doing that too, you're yeah. going, "This looks really embarrassing." And then part of your brain is thinking ahead, going, "And it's going to be on DVD forever." Mm. <laughs> well, <laughs> Peter Andre got an aria, really, for Funky Junkie. 1994. Uh, Peter Andre took home the gong. Mm. But he's a pop musician, Ed. You can't dispute. No, no, he, I just, he I deserves just, award as much I as anybody just, else. I would like to know which one he got. How many have you got, Dave? A couple, yeah. Really? It's like when you get a Logie Tony. Yes. They get rid of you. That's <laughs> you, right. It's who, a who, farewell. Who did you? Who did you? Here's beat, your award. Who did I beat? Later. Who did you beat out for best male artist? Before me, Ed, yeah. there was Barnsey yeah. and there was Farnsey. The two years before and you. Geez, like ever. Oh, right, that was right, all right. it was for was about fifty right? years. Is that right? And then I won one. I didn't know I was going to get it. I was trying to dress like an actor. Peter Wingard, who I really <laughs> liked, and I was wearing a wig and a pink suit. And all of a sudden I won, and I had to collect the award from um, Shirley Manson from oh, Garbage. Yes, yeah. and um, Up you the, went. The lady from the Divinals, <laughs> whose name I forget. Chrissy Amphlett. Yeah, Chrissy Amphlett. Yeah. And I think Shirley thought I was some nut from, the, <laughs> from some pre-9-11 terrorist group who was coming up, and there was no kissing happening, and I got the award... <laughs> And uh, it was one of the strangest nights of my life. Yeah. You mentioned Peter Wingard, and that leads oh. me to Alan oh. Jones for reasons the lawyers would not like me to say. It's in the book, Tony. It's not your problem. 
Jonestown, have mm. you seen this book, Dave? I've heard about it. I read it over the weekend. It's a top read from uh, your Chris Masters. I'd suggest if you're thinking of getting this book, buy it today because Alan Jones is back in the country no, and my guess is it will be pulped by the end of the <laughs> week. I think he's going to let it stand? I reckon this is going to be a collector's <laughs> that item. good? There is so little in this book that I can read out. Oh, really? Uh, you're, not, you're not scared of Alan? I you? am. I think anyone who Are reads you? this book will be frightened of Alan. Here's a bit on page 269. Where do we go? On Friday the 29th of April, Alan Jones Live was uh, axed from Channel 10 and replaced with Are You Being Served? <laughs> At Alan's request. <laughs> I don't like the slurs. I think it's irrelevant that Same. Mr. Humphreys may have been gay. I, Who? I think people shouldn't oh. talk about that. What's it got to do with his career? Mm. Nothing. And his fine work? Nothing. Sorry about that, John Mayer fans. We do have Greg Fleet. His body mm. is a hinterland. <laughs> oh, His body's full of contraband. <laughs> oh! I met a guy who Alan Jones taught at school, and, and they called him... is he in counselling? Uh, yeah, he was. He was Man he was alive. There's a hundred pages of that book about what it's like to be in Alan's class. Oh, he was very angry. This guy, he was a guy who works at the ABC, and he said they called him Blood and Three Strokes Jones. That's he'd, true. He'd hit you with a cane or whatever to the point where... Where you would bleed. He loved yeah, caning yeah. boys. Mm-hmm. There's just whole chapters of him just caning boys. Yep, absolutely. Still now? I went to do an interview on his show and there was like heaps you, of people in the foyer. Well, you weren't on the Ellen Jones on his show. show. Yeah, yeah, oh, I wasn't. You would end. have been a disgrace. I was going to go on, but I ran because I got there and in the foyer there's all these frightened people and they were all lined up in school uniform and they were waiting <laughs> to get the cane. <laughs> it was. He'd got so many kids who ordered to get the cane when he was a teacher at school. He had a backlog. These guys were all, yeah, some were like bank managers and lawyers. One was in prison and got day release. You know, and just queuing up. It's, it's taken me 47 years, Henderson, but it's time for you to bend over and take the cane. What else is going on? Uh, John Howard, we are talking about climate change. Yeah. And, of course, nothing's been done for years. Mm. And now this 700-page report has come out. And as it says in the paper today, the report focuses on the economic and not the environmental consequences of global warming. So suddenly action is being taken. Oh, is that right? Yeah, people are going, yeah, I'll be underwater, that'll be fine. But what, my stock portfolio's in danger? (laughs) Hang on a second. Here's John Howard uh, talking about um, climate trouble in Parliament. Have a listen to this. Of course climate change is occurring. The important thing... Oh, 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 you know, I'm I'm a chorus of, of approval from the opposition. Wow, he wow. sounds like he really enjoys climate change, yeah, that John Howard. Yeah, I mean, sounds like he change. thinks he's in charge of it. <laughs> hey, Mr. Howard, check out this picture of Amanda Vanstone in the nutty. Oh, oh, oh. Lady you know, Howard. Howard. Hey, Mr. Howard, check out this picture of Alan Jones in the nutty. Oh, oh, oh. You know, he hates. He's got the same reaction to everything, that guy. <laughs> he knows what he likes. We have received a package Ooh. from CAFCOR. Oh, yes. Now, if you received a package like this in the mail, what would you do, Greg Fleet? What would Greg Fleet do? I would probably open the package and whatever was inside it, put it on and wear it. (laughs) Wow. And how long would you wear it for? The whole day? Uh, Yes. Yes, I would. Yes, I'd wear it for the whole oh. day. You'd want it to be something comfortable, wouldn't you? It wanted to be something that was a bit, that on a day like today, you'd want it to be free oh flowing, something that could you know get a bit. Oh of, my oh, goodness! You should, oh, <laughs> that you, one's got shells on it. It's you. four Saturday captains. Oh, oh they're so they're more beautiful than I could ever. One of them's actually got cowrie shells oh on it. Oh my goodness! What would John Howard say if you could see these oh. now? Oh, oh. Okay, okay, look at this. And the tag says, one size fits most. (laughs) Leopard for you, Marsland. Cheers. Greg, which one did you have always said you wanted? I want the cowrie shell. You want this one? I don't care. Okay. I don't care. Now that leaves me with a little fella I like to call Peacock. It's so satiny. I'll wear any cap can. Can you hear this on a microphone? (laughs) <laughs> oh, that's sick. You're sex. listening to the satiny sounds of Triple M. Oh, wow. Or put KOFM in Newcastle. Ding, ding. You wow. might be wondering why this segment is called What Would Greg Fleet Do? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Sorry. if I received a package in the mail, whatever it was, I would open it up and I would put it on and wear it. That oh. looks suspiciously like a moo to How me. How dare you? <laughs> How dare a you? Moom. How dare oh, you? Everyone's nuding up. Well, tanning up. I'm obviously, getting... we're going to put it, these on during the song. And we yeah. want people to call up and... Any kind of conundrum, yeah, 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 any yeah. kind of moral dilemma. And I, I have helped a lot of people. How about advice on being self-managed? 
Yeah, no, well, that's ended. I've actually got management. And, you know, the first job <laughs> my new manager got me, I've got to go up in a glider and write a thousand words about it uh, if I survive. <laughs> Have you, are you Hang being on. managed by Inside Sport? Or are you yeah. being managed by Frank Butcher from EastEnders? Hot <laughs> cow! A round, please, for Rob Sitch. Yeah. Thanks for coming in, Rob. Thank you. Matters arising from the Jay Giles Band. Yes. A, I want a playlist on my, <laughs> on my iPod. Songs that have the whistle. Oh, you know, yeah. Because one of my favourite playlists is Songs That Have the Whisper. Oh, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, Spinal yeah. Tap sent it up with Listen, Listen. You know, oh, yeah, that you drop the it. flower people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All through the 60s, there was songs that somewhere in the middle of the hard rock, they would jo- that he goes, quiet. Someone oh, else. Yes. <laughs> the bass player, usually. We need a psychedelic morning. The Moody Blues, uh, with the Moody Blues, Nights in White Satin. Is that going to qualify? It's got, a, it's got a kind of a moody story in the middle. Yeah. That's an impressive playlist, though, isn't it? Oh, I think You so. should see my iPod. <laughs> yeah. Ed actually sang that song recently. Have we? Do you want to give us another rendition? Are Nights you kidding in White me? Satin. No, I didn't. Oh, it's in the library. We'll get that out. No, it's not. Matty Dow's going to put that to an orchestra oh, backing God. Phil Spector style. <laughs> uh, but when you say so whistling happy. songs, when yeah. you're talking about The Stranger by Billy Joel, <laughs> the original EastEnders theme, that had whistling. It did Don't Worry, Be Happy. Yeah. Is that whistling? Bobby McFerrin did all of the... the he did in- all the- he I did. didn't realise. When I mm. first heard it, I was like, yeah, whatever. And then they were like, oh, this is a great achievement. I didn't realise that he yeah. did everything. When you need a, a, a sort of gratuitous happy ending in your movie, yeah. you just slap that song on. Is that right? I think the nugget with Eric Banner, they just go to Don't Worry, Be Happy. I think Schindler's List, the early cut. Oh, is that right? I ended with <laughs> Bobby McFerrin. I, I share an office with a, a music guru by the name of Billy Pinnell, oh, and I remember yeah. the day after the Grammys when Bobby McFerrin's Don't Worry, Be Happy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> One best song of the year. Did it? Uh, Billy was shaking his head going, um, who wrote Fast Cars? Fast Car by Tracy Fast Chapman. Car, Tracy. Oh, he goes, yeah, cool. And he was in his office t- morning going, how, oh, don't worry, be happy, could beat a song by Tracy Chapman. Fast Cars, one of the greatest songs that's ever. <laughs> yes. When you go, go back, that's, that's a big call to give Bobby McFerrin the Grammy. For I that. know. It's, it's like the year that Stairway to Heaven was beaten by The Streak. I don't know. <laughs> Ed probably wouldn't remember that. What's the streak? <laughs> um, it's a song about streaking. Really? It's really big. Sounds all right. In the 70s. It had the uh, the riposte. They call him the streak. Yibbidee, yibbidee. <laughs> don't look Ethel. Seems pretty good. Yeah. I think there's a Radiohead version of that coming. It's a lot moodier. but uh... It'd be hard pressed to run out of lyrics when you've written a song called The Streak. <laughs> but they did. I call him the streak. Yibbidee, yibbidee. Oh. Thanks for coming in, yeah, Rob, because pleasure. yesterday's show, uh, we had to get Greg Fleet in here at the last minute. Mm. And I noticed there was police tape around the studio yeah, before. Oh, it I... usually is. I don't know if you've seen his... Have you seen his latest stage show yet? No. Greg Fleet is touring with a show, and in case you're wondering, in his latest show, on stage every night, he'll be... Cultivating and trafficking commercial quantities of cannabis, possessing amphetamines and stealing electricity. It's quite a show. <laughs> stealing electricity. Every night he steals electricity. I don't know how he does it. Amazing. Stealing uh, soil. <laughs> I, that's a crime that we've been exposed to once before. I don't know whether Tony's ever told you this, Ed, but once no. we, uh, we were a part of a radio show that, that had a giveaway as a house. Yeah. A free and they, house. And they came along. What was and it called, Rob? Was it, it was what? the house on every street, I think was the name. Uh, yeah, yeah, good stuff, good sizzle. But they can't, we cleverly advertised the address of this house, <laughs> <laughs> including the fact that it possessed the plasma TV of its day, you know, a big uh-huh. Sony widescreen. And um, they came along, stole everything. <laughs> yeah. But on the way out. <laughs> it was a rival radio station, I suspect. <laughs> on the way out, the thieves just paused and went, wait a second. Wait a second. That's, that's new lawn. Yeah. <laughs> Some ground there that and nobody's going to miss. And they actually rolled up the new lawn, yeah. put it in the truck and drove away with the front lawn. <laughs> Took it out of there. Uh, we, you know, the people who won the competition did get a three-pack of CDs, though, so they were pretty happy. Uh, what about if you go to our website, you can see what happened on Caftan Day yesterday. Graphic pictures of us in our satiny Caftan lounges. You can see what Mr. Marsden looks like. Because people can't quite see what he looks like in that picture of my dog that's up there. But now you'll finally get to see, as he claims, a Ewan McGregor lookalike. No, I reckon you're more Rusty Crow, an early Rusty Crow. I think so. Oh, you, and you've been practising the Russell Crow voice, haven't you? What have you come up with? G'day, folks. How you doing? That's not bad. It's not it's actually, I always get the stick Take from the smile honest. out of your voice. Take, you, you have a natural smile in your voice. Yep. Get some anger in there, right? Mm-hmm. No one understands you. No matter how much good acting you do, no one understands you. No one understands your music and your lyrics. Think that. They don't see it the way Toe Fog do. It's 30-odd foot of grunt.
People don't understand the grunt. You're angry now, Richard. Have another crack. G'day, folks. How you doing? Ooh. I'd still, I'd focus. I'd still wouldn't be scared if you if I ran into you at Veal Gardens, Rich. What about if I had a phone in my hand? <laughs> you were talking about whispering music. Now, Rob, do you get into the whispery acting? Don't you love a bit of that? Give us your Sam Worthington and Macbeth again, uh, Ed. Is that um one of them daggers I see before me, or a dagger of the mind? That's a line from Macbeth. <laughs> one of them daggers I see before me. Uh, that is a bit of an acting trick, isn't it? You've got to get uh, back. Drop your voice like that. Oh, he's good. Sound guys to come in. And uh, the audience think that what you're saying means something, but really all you're thinking about is the all-you-can-eat buffer. Oh, that's very good. Get your hands off that moose bucket, you. <laughs> Sex me here. More fried chicken. Brain snapping bargains. Ken Bruce has gone completely mad. What are we talking about? How know. is this a radio know. show? I don't know. Uh, what about here's just another thing to mention. Right. Boytown Confidential. Oh, You've heard what, about what Boytown, this yeah, film. Yeah, yeah. Juggernaut. This supposedly tells the Robert true story of this band that get back mm. together. It's not the true story. Yeah. Within the film itself, you might see this idiot in a mullet who's making a documentary about the band. <laughs> His name is Terry. That actually exists. That documentary exists. You yeah. can see clips from it on the Boytown website. It's called Boytown Confidential. It blows the lid off Boytown. Go there. See that. Good times. Here's something we missed. Halloween. Mm. We didn't really celebrate Halloween here. I'm not really sure what we're celebrating. No. I, don't I, really, really I still sure. don't understand it. What well, we... they celebrate it at the Playboy Mansion. Of course they do. Where Hugh Hefner uh, decked all the, the bunnies mm. up in scary gear. Did he? And, uh, well, I think we've got a clip from the news. The dramatic makeover was for a Halloween party at his L.A. home. The bunnies had special outfits for the event, but the eight-year-old chose his classic costume, a dressing gown. A dressing gown? It's a smoking jacket. A dressing gown. <laughs> but, you know, he is just like an old guy in... It should just be a dressing gown. Yeah, yeah, in his Jetsons dressing gown. <laughs> With an oval teen in his hands. <laughs> I think there's a soundbite of uh, Hugh Hefner. He also revealed his first love was horror films. In my early teens, I actually created a club in a magazine called Shudder. And so the first club I created was not the Playboy Club, it was it was a Shudder Club. Yeah, if you've seen Hugh Hefner recently, it's the Shudder Club again. <laughs> it's back. <laughs> it's Shudder time when he comes ambling in in the smoking jacket. I was shuddering. I saw, uh, I think we missed a show called Shock Docs. Oh, don't watch Shock Docs. Shock- I mean, I know I shouldn't discourage people from watching television, but that is one disturbing show. Shockumentaries are my favourite type of mentry. Oh. And uh, last night it was, you know what, Tone? Oh, I saw five seconds of it. Big fatties getting fed on a stick. We're not making fun of people who are overweight. No, We're talking all. about people who cannot get out of bed. They have to be levered out of bed. I just heard the statistics. I was in the next room and I was hearing phrases like, has not had a bath in 14 years. <laughs> that's, that's has thing. not worn clothes in a decade. <laughs> not even the caftan people can make it one. Must be fed with a bit of sandwich <laughs> on the end of a stick. <laughs> I mean, Dr. Rob Sitch, yeah. how does it get that bad? I, I don't know. I mean, you just, I think eating's the, the key to it. Yeah, yeah but there step. must be a point where you can't, you, you go, okay, I'm really big, but yeah. now I cannot get out of bed. I cannot have a bath for 14 years. Yeah. They're craning me to the hospital. Yeah. Surely that doesn't happen so gradually that you don't notice it's happening. No, but it becomes an addiction. You get addicted right. to sugar highs and uh, all that sort of thing. But just, I mean, they, if they can't get to the fridge. No. You'd think that would solve the problem. I think that'd be it. They've got collaborators, people bringing them oh, sandwiches. Oh, I see what ah. you're saying. Those people should just draw the line. They should say, look, Barry. You've had enough. You jab of that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> My God. It was funny when we had a Star Wars party. Everyone loved you. Yeah. You were hilarious. But now. When, when the pizza delivery guy turns up with 42 pizzas to a one-bedroom apartment, <laughs> you might. <laughs> Penny might drop. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Dan, what's up? How's it going? What have we missed? Well, I know you guys are into your movies. We are. Yeah. We've, we've had, you know, over the years, you know, um, movies based on video games, video yep. games based on movies. Yep. But uh, back in the day, mm-hmm. the best thing was board games based on movies. Whoa, hang on a sec. Board yeah. ga- oh, there was the Escape from Colditz board game that was from the TV show. What else, Dan? What other ones have we missed? Well, my favourite <laughs> and probably the weirdest was the Jaws game. What happens in the Jaws game? And it was a big plastic shark with a mouth held open by rubber bands that it was filled with uh, old tyres, boots, dead fish, and you had to remove them with a hook before the uh, before the mouth snapped shut. Dan, that is a yeah. brilliant game. It was a great game. <laughs> Do you still have it? I don't, unfortunately. Oh. No, I've been searching eBay for months. That's wow. Sound- 
I have, I've mentioned this uh, before, I have the 45 single of the theme from Jaws, which is the most bizarre 45 ever. (laughs) When would you put that on? Hey, what about the game? Well, maybe we need a board game of that new Australian film, The Book of Revelation. That'd be, a <laughs> That'd be a rather interesting disturbing. few hours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Paul, how are you going? Now, you've got a whistling song for us. Uh, yep. Which is? Uh, Michael Bolton sitting on the dock of the boat. Oh, <laughs> right. Bolton. Yeah. And uh, how does the whistle break go in that one, Paul? I'll give it a go. Give yep. it a go. Some of that. I would rather hear that than the Michael Bolton Same Bolt here. Version. Paul, is there a film clip attached to that song at all? I think there might be. I can sense the Bolt standing on the on some kind of dock with just wind going everywhere through his coiffed mullet yeah. and one of those shirts that's like a, a circular neck with a, a big medallion at the front. Is and one a ruffle. And a ruffle. Yeah. Did he have any ruffles, Paul? Oh, he might have. Yeah, yeah, you know it. You're wearing ruffles. That'd like be a, a great look for Knights in White Satin, no, would you it? think? And that's all we got time for. And Thank how you, everyone. Knights in White Satin Thank you, go again. Call in. Knights in White Satin. <laughs> Never reach to the end. <laughs> Something or other. <laughs> Something else. Have you got an example? Of, uh, who is it, David Dickinson? Yep. I know Rob loves David Dickinson. We're going to have an eye-popping, cracking lot of kit on that stand. <laughs> Antiques Valuer on Foxtel. Another person we love on Foxtel from EastEnders on UK TV, Frank Butcher. Hot cow! There you go. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people have been emailing in saying, surely you can get those two together. Have you got the montage there? Have I done my f- Homework. Well, you've taken it as gospel when you should have known damn better. My homework has been over 25 years. Print that. Pot kettle. 25 years. I've got flair, I've got talent, and I've made several million pounds. <sighs> what can you say about the antique business? I have every right. So you're saying now you're qualified to you tell me. me. I couldn't tell you I know all about it. I can't come charging up to your shout in the oats. I've been doing this business for 25 years. <sighs> I'm very disappointed in this conversation today. And in fact, I'm a bit off with it. What is the matter with you, woman? I am not happy. Pot kettle! I think I've had enough, quite frankly. <sighs> you know, you're taking the out of me. You are an old woman for crying out loud. Doing a stretch at your time in life. Over 25 years, that was my take home home. Well, fair exchange is no robbery. I'm not a big brother. Pot kettle! I will walk from this series. Like the dozy big plum he always was. You can carry on merrily on your bloody own. God help us. Now that's how I feel about it, because you've taken... 25 years of special work <sighs> with a lot of flair and a lot of talent into question. All right? this for some cockeyed revenge about nothing. I'm going to say this from now on. No more prisoners, no more nice talk. From now on, you are dealing with Dickinson. And I love you, you <laughs> balmy old old... No bull... <laughs> God help us. <laughs> there you go. So if you'd like us to combine anyone else, send in your requests. Fifi Box is with us. Oh, yes. Ed Cavalier yeah, needs yeah, a new yeah, flatmate, yeah, yeah, Fifi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't believe this, Ed, that you would have trouble finding a flatmate. Oh, it's tougher than you think. You've already got the genius guy. Mm, category one genius, John, right. uh, who yesterday was <laughs> yesterday was lauding the praises of uh, dry cleaning. He came in with his suit and he went, yeah, yeah. you guys know about dry cleaning? I said, yeah, <laughs> I, I think I'm across it. He goes, look at these, look at these pants, look at these suit pants. Covered in mud, they were. Covered in mud. <laughs> so why were they covered in mud, John? Oh, I, I crawled home through a footy paddock. <laughs> wow. Hey, John, he was applying to be your flatmate. No, no, he, no he is. He, he's, he's, he's in. That's actually, the he's kind of talent yeah. you're oh, going to be hanging out with. myself, Category yes. 1 genius John. Yes. Uh, both of us fantastic table tennis players. Mm. Yeah. And now our other flatmate, Kelsey, has chosen not to. She's decided we, oh, we said we're all going to move out together, go to a new place, a nicer place, because we don't have a dishwasher or a okay. washing machine. Yeah. Carpet's a bit dodgy. You know, the, you're yeah. being expected to bring along a lot of stuff. Yeah, right. Moving yeah. in here. Yeah, this is all part of the criteria, right? <laughs> but so she's decided she doesn't want to live with us. She wants to live with other people. So now John and I need somebody else. Maybe we need to, before we actually look for a candidate, mm. we need to look at why Kelsey doesn't want to live yeah. with you anymore. Yeah. Why is she leaving? <laughs> no, no, she's got like, she, she promised a friend that she'd live, like a, like a girlfriend that she'd live with her. Okay. So it's not us. Is and, it anything to do with how you eat a lot? 
Yeah. Do you have fridge? I imagine with your flatmate scenario, you might have fridge issues. No, see, the problem is if I, go, if I get home late, then mm. I'm going to eat their food. Yeah, see, I knew you'd be a food <laughs> eater. I knew you'd be a food fridge stealer. I can't help it. I know yeah, I you can't. can't. I've watched thing. you. But I Ed, want to help it. Ed is good when you need a jar opened. I'm very good. He's very I've good. I've already at opened that. it and eaten most yeah, of what's inside. Right. <laughs> that's true. So, what? I mean, so it we need some criteria. You, but firstly, you're not making a very good ad for this joint. You're not going to have any food <laughs> left. No, look, it's going to be. There's a bloke who's startled by mud. <laughs> what else? What's the, what are the upside of this? And you'd hog the couch because you're so the large. Couch. I don't you, hog the you couch. Are you sure? If you no, were reclining, no, no one I, else could I sit down. I often lie on the ground. Okay, good. Yeah, I, and, and I'll and I'll shove over. I'll shove over a bit. If you if you make the hand gestures, <laughs> yeah. I'll shove over so yeah. you can sit down. But you wouldn't want a little person because they'd feel overshadowed by you. Or wouldn't they feel like, safe? <laughs> Yeah, and the yeah, other okay, problem is that we lose point. keys. There was a period of about two weeks where all three of us had lost the keys to our house, yeah. so none of us could get inside the house. <laughs> I feel safe. I'm still back with that because I did for the first three months of this show. No one knew who Ed was, and everyone in the sales department just thought I'd hired a bodyguard. <laughs> that was like hulking guy following me everywhere. So that's a good look. Okay, okay some pluses okay. in there. So there we go. Yeah. You, you'll feel safe. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm quite. I, I didn't lose my key. It got nicked out of the mailbox, so that's I didn't lose a key. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Uh, I often go to the supermarket to get food, so there's often food around. He's good at miming to uh, mid '80s <laughs> synth pop classics. <laughs> I'm quite good at, um, you know, I'm quite good at table things. tennis. <laughs> I'm quite good at table tennis. <laughs> oh, table tennis yeah, I'm, sorry. I'm good at table tennis. <laughs> Uh, there's not like a, a parade of floozies coming in and out. Oh, and you can do some um, charades or a little bit of uh, theatre sport action if people are bored and if, the, te- the electricity goes if off. If people want to play, you thank God Season. you're here at home. I'm, I'm good for yep. that. You know, I'll get Dan and Nikki around <laughs> and Heidi and we'll, we'll crack out a scenario. That's cool. So these are all pluses. And you no know? parade of floozies, you say. No parade of floozies. <laughs> oh. You're not even a dribble of floozies, you know, not even a trickle of floozies. It's yeah. it's you know, it's all above board. Okay. So this is what this is so that's so that's what we're that's what John and I are offering. Any uh-huh. comments from you, Mr. Marson? I mean Do I want to live with Ed? Oh, hang on, that's an interesting <laughs> that's idea. That's an interesting uh, idea. Could but, that work? Uh, yeah. He's a bit of a nerd, you know what I mean? Like we're a bit cool. Is but the unspoken fun. thing here that you're looking for a woman to be in this no, situation? We don't care. John and I don't care. We have very strict criteria. Must like table tennis. John's gonna have a cat. Called Ken, so they must like cats. <laughs> Ken. Uh, and uh, the other, what, what was the other one? Oh, they'd be good if they've got like if if they often go to the supermarket. You know what I mean? Like oh, yeah. do the shopping. No, 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 the bit no, earlier no, no. that you where you said you did it no, was just on. to impress women listening. Come on, shush. Uh, and then they pay their rent. That's okay. And um, and then the again, that's about that's probably it. I reckon. All right. Do you fill <laughs> the bill? Oh, and no, like um, and no people that do th- come home and say things like. I watched The Current Affair yesterday, and did you know how much bacteria is in food? Oh, I, yeah. It was actually really shocking. Yeah. None of that. No. No, no, like, no telling me what A Current Affair said as if it's facts. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to find a flatmate for Ed Cavalier. <laughs> It'll be just like living in Man About the House. There'll be three pairs of underpants hanging on a clothesline oh, yeah. every morning. Yeah, we don't have a clothesline. And uh, someone's ass wobbling away from camera <laughs> yeah. while their name is supered up. I'm into that. <laughs> I can see you as man about the house. There's going to be some surprise questions. You didn't know that. But oh, really? Surprise questions for everyone. And it's now. Yeah. And Fifi uh, isn't going to put up with any nonsense. She'll spot someone dodgy. <laughs> Fifi, you, 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 what about you, Fifi? To, oh. to live with you. Yeah. Right. Uh, at, at the moment. Wow. Oh, I could I've see got... so much <laughs> flashing across <laughs> her face then. At, at the moment, I'm not looking. Yeah. But it's good to know that if, if John. Work Category feet. one genius ever leaves. Yeah. I could feel it for him. Feet. But You're... this spot, I won't feel. Okay. You're forgetting okay. Mr. Box. <laughs> yeah. Of, yeah. No, yeah. of yeah, Muller yeah. fame. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, Luke. Hello. Mate, what do you got? Oh, well, I've got uh, the best of Nick Kershaw on CD. I've oh, got a now whole. And then. Yes, excellent. Um, I've got a whole heap of uh, comic books, a uh, whole heap of DVDs. Love doing karaoke. Do you? Yeah. Uh, tell me something. When Do you sing the, in the karaoke bits? Uh, I try to. Okay, because my I, I can't really sing, so I like to play backup air synth. <laughs> yeah. How how would that go down? Do you have any any numbers that you that you do that need air synth? Ooh. I'm sorry, you've lost out, Luke. The Hang on, the answer Ooh. was, wouldn't it be good by Nick Kershaw? I uh, should have picked that one. Luke, you say you've got the, the best of Nick Kershaw CD. <laughs> yep. Yes. What's it called? Um, I'm not exactly sure because mm. I now ordered it. Now and then. There we go. Uh, 
Except that's not really true. Because now and then is the one where he just re-records all his old songs, what isn't it? Saying? Is well, that it's really? Got 17 uh, songs on it. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be greatest hits. Looks. The essential uh, Nick Kershaw. Oh, the, essential. the essential Nick Kershaw uh, is the one you're looking uh, for. Uh, but look, oh, look, really? hey, look, you know what? You can come around. You can come and hang whenever you want. Bring some DVDs. I like to Luke. I, I, I like Luke. You're just okay. missing Luke out of. Um, no, no, no. He's in, he's, in, he's, he's in the short list. Okay, Hello, great. Jake. How are you? How you going, boys? Tell us what happened to you. What's going on with that, mate? This dude's ready to move in, Dicko. Mm-hmm. Uh, we live in a big house. It's mm-hmm. nicknamed a mansion. Mm-hmm. Um, is that in Sydney? No, nah, it's in Geelong. Ah, good. Yeah, oh. keep going. Yeah. <laughs> different mansion. Uh, yeah, yeah keep different going. mansion. Uh, anyway, uh, he's a conspiracy theorist. He's right down that alley. Is but uh, he? he found a, a condom in a breakfast bowl. <laughs> oh. I, I don't know how it got there. <laughs> in a bowl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not like he bought some breakfast cereal and there was a condom in the yes. packet. No, it was yeah, just no. in his bowl. Yes. The other thing is, like, I don't think he's ever seen one before or, like, had to use one. I don't know. He just well, lost it. I don't know it. either. He, <laughs> no, he lost it. What kind yeah. of person loses it just because there's a condom in his well, cornflakes? Like, it, it's disgusting, but the funniness outweighs the disgustingness, I It think, does, you know? yeah, Massively. <laughs> that's pretty typical of what goes on at the mansion. All right. What I hear. You know what, Jake? The man, you got a table tennis table, man? Yeah. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> yeah, top of the list, bro. Stay on the oh, line. Yeah. Good work. Hello, Bill. <laughs> Morning, gentlemen and lady. How are you? Oh, uh, thank good, you, good, Bill. Good, good. What's going? What do you got, Bill? Um, I am a mean cook. I make a mm-hmm. lovely risotto. Good man. Ooh. Um, and I work in the best DVD store ever. Do you? Oh, are you allowed to name it or? That... Yeah, yeah, I can name it. Uh, it's called the Movie Reel. The Movie Reel. R W E L. Yeah, R W E L. Yeah, good, good. Okay, someone comes in. They've got no idea what they want to rent for the weekend. Yeah. What's your recommendation? Yeah, work. Midnight Run. Oh. Are you just saying that because that's what I say? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. Come on, Bill. Come on, Bill. All right, um, all right, all right second. Um, his second. Body Melts. Body Melts? Body Melts, the Philip Brophy 1993 weird-ass science fiction thing that was Lisa McCune's first film. Uh, yes, it was. Uh, okay, Bill, here we go. Second scenario. A, ch- yep. a kid walks up who's clearly not 18. He's got a bad moustache. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and a bad fringe going on, and but he wants to rent Scarface, and an, and uh, and one of the, and I think it's Terminator One that's R rated as well. Do you let them have it? Um, if we're talking hypothetical, no, we're talking it's actually going to happen. <laughs> oh, we're talking it's actually going to happen. Yep. Um, yes, because I feel that he needs to see both those films. Congratulations, oh, well, well, done. well done, Bill. Well I'm done. loving Bill. Oh, yeah, I'm loving. And he Bill. cooks risotto. Yeah, cooks risotto. Not bad. Okay, good work, Bill. Hello, Joel. Hey, how are you going, Ed? Yeah, good, mate. What do you Sorry, got to offer? Peace. What you... Uh, listen, Ed, I, I believe I have the clincher. The second guy didn't sound too convincing, but I oh, have a table tennis table. Do you? Yeah. I certainly do. Is it, Thank uh, you. Is it competition <laughs> standard? Uh, it, it could definitely uh, be the home turf for this uh, tournoi. Oh. It is yet to be... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, good point, sir. Yeah, Joel. Yet to be. <laughs> Joel, I can't have my detra- I can't live with my detractors. Uh, now- Can I just point out something, Ed, that's sort of gone missing in the last three mm-hmm. phone calls? You're not actually looking for a place to live. You're looking for someone to come and live with you. Yeah, but if they want to bring along accoutrements. Oh, no, I'll go there. I'll, oh, get okay. rid of- I'll ditch John, no worries. You, oh, if, okay. the place- <laughs> if the place is good enough, he's out of there. Whatever. Hey, uh- Freeze company. <laughs> so, Joel. I also have a, uh, an old synth, too. Oh. What? An old synth? Is it a Roland? Uh, I believe it's a, or maybe a Korg. Term. Oh, a Korg! You've Korg. got a synthesizer. Oh, yes. Hang on you a second. You can do Dan Hartman's instant replay on a Korg. Hang on, hang on a second, Joel. <laughs> if, we get, uh, if we get three, Ed, uh, you, John, and I, we could perhaps make some sort of Kershaw cover band. Oh, <laughs> yes, and Kirsch Aid could finally get off oh. the ground. Do you like cats, Joel? I love cats. Oh! <laughs> Oh, fake breasts. So you a fan of fake breasts? Um, I actually have some of those too. <laughs> wow, you, you've got everything Ed likes. Exact. <laughs> Joel, I think we got. I think we've got a winner. I, I don't want to hear anymore. So you're saying that we could be playing TT with your fabulous fake rat going bouncing up and down the other side, and we and John could be playing delicious Nick Kershaw style synth in the background. Oh, that sounds fantastic. That's the way I want to live. Would you want to live <laughs> your life that way, Fifi Box? I would not like to live my life with synthesizers table. Maybe with you, Joel, but I mean, I'm sitting next to Ed. He eats everything, oh, Joel. Yeah, Joel. Your fridge will be empty. Yeah, Joel. He's, a la- he's the largest man I've ever seen. There's no room on the settee for you. <laughs> he's learning breakdancing. <laughs> yeah, Joel, do you, do you know how to breakdance, man? 
I'll come to the classes with you, mate. Yeah, you'll be in my crew. Oh, that's <laughs> it. And he yeah. eats corrugated iron. Yeah. <laughs> so to. many skills. That's it. Joel's the winner. Get this. Weekdays on the Triple M Network and KOFM in Newcastle.